morning, folks. Welcome back to Manistow Key. We finally got a bit of rain. We've been sitting in an extreme fire hazard here for the last two weeks, so we got about three quarters of an inch of rain, which helps. It's not enough, but it's welcome, even though it makes for not a great day for milling. So I guess it's time to make a, an update and a video and a little bit of a celebration today. We uh, the BX is sitting at 299.6 hours right now, and uh, thought I'd go through things that uh, I really like, things we've done, and a few little things that might be willing to change. But anyway, grab your coffee since it's not quite so warm today, and uh, we'll go through some things. Let's get at it. One thing when I bought the Kubota I never thought I would ever have a use for was pallet forks. I got these, these are Titan forks, they're, they're lightweight forks. They're on the tractor more than anything else. Is. You know, I've got you know, this, I've got the bucket, I've got the snow pusher, and I've got the stump bucket that I've made. And of the, since I've had it, I bet you these uh, have been on the machine 80% of the time for the usage since I got the forks. So they're Titan forks. Uh, I'll put a link in the description down below and uh, you can check them out. But definitely recommend them. They're lightweight. They've got the two inch receiver on them. So it's great for moving trailers around. Thumbs up for that. Price is right too. Regards to tires. The first tires I've got on here, I haven't had any issues with. I have running over a nail, that's my old fault. But in regards to working around the yard and out pulling logs or whatever else, no, no problem. The, the front tires and you know, you go in AI2 and they'll tell you, know, give you a breakdown of where the front tires are. Um, it'd be nice if they were a little bit stronger in the front end. They definitely, you put a load on the front and they're uh, looking pretty flat. Um, I don't think I'd want to operate them heavy loaded in, in rocky area because I'm sure you would pinch a bead but uh, snow and everything else quite happy with them uh, you, you watch JP outdoors he goes through a whole thing about the tire chains and the differences and you know my own video where you see uh, with the snow pusher tire chains on the back the front tires don't touch the ground big difference um, R14s I haven't had a chance to work with those yet. Um, they look interesting. Uh, I know uh, a friend of mine's got the R4, a uh, little John Deere, and it's definitely harder on the turf than the turf tire is. So if, you know, one of your primary uses of the tractor is for mowing the lawn, and that's what, you know, this one hasn't done much of it, but it's definitely one of its purposes that it was bought for. Um, the turf tire is where you want to be. So if you're concerned about their durability, no different than any other uh, subcompact tire, I wouldn't think, unless you get into the, I think they're GNKs or something like that. AI2 refers to them in their uh, B and BX comparison. Supposedly they're a lot stronger. Um, good tires, if you're concerned about them being strong enough, don't be, they're there. One thing I've heard of and have seen examples of is folks getting tractors, you know, be it the BX or whatever, and they don't get something for the back. You got a front end loader on the front of your tractor, without something on the back, you're not going to lift what the capacity of the tractor is. Anyways, the box plate, in my opinion, probably should be included in your initial purchase. This one is uh, served me extremely well from you know, moving dirt for the driveway to snow clearing up close to the house. It's squaring off the bank so it looks nice and sharp to, uh, you know, regrading. Um, one of the first things we did with the Kubota was uh, regraded the, the spot where we put the septic tank. The septic tank area uh, was all brushed. Not much different than this, but anyways, uh, cleared all that out using this and then leveled it off. Saved me 
probably three hours of work with the big machines and charges for having that done. So it started to pay for itself real quick. Not very often I actually had the tines down. Right now I do, just I'm trying to regrade the uh, area where the new barn's gonna go. But most of the time, the uh, regular blade is more than enough. I did add the uh, four inch steel piece of uh, weight on the back. More so for actually for digging power than pushing the, the box plate down. The additional weight on the tractor makes a big difference on how well it digs into the dirt. Anyways, box blade, be it a land pride, be it whatever, um, should be or should be at least a definite consideration when you buy your tractor. Two thumbs up to that. One thing I did add, obviously, you know, as you can see, is the uh, auxiliary lighting. This was just a cheap set from Amazon. It makes a huge difference on what you can see. The Kubota lights, even with the uh, halogen upgrades, from what I understand, just aren't going to do what this does. Winter operations where you're clearing snow and these kind of things. you need that extra light, you know. It stays dark until after eight o'clock up here in the middle of the winter, so you, unless you wanna be plowing snow and late for work, you're gonna need the lights. Easy modification. There's actually wiring in place from Kubota that you just gotta plug into. Talk to your local Kubota dealer and they'll help you out. One really small gripe that I have with the LA344, that's the front end loader, is I've had a leak here. And actually on the forums you read along and you'll find lots of folks, you know, say they have a little leak. Um, I have cinched it down and it seems to have taken care of the problem, but it's something that you want to keep an eye on because it uh, definitely has the ability to get in the annoying stage because it starts collecting dirt and whatnot <laughs> and above that I added myself a little mirror real simple basically it's a stick and rebar actually with a washer on it, it sticks down through where the you can put the quick connect for your hydraulics into goes up little stick gives you something at least so you got an idea of what's behind you. One of the little tips I have for those that are going to service your own equipment when you're doing the oil change and stuff, you know, you got your drill guard down and you know, your hood's up. Hood's up. There we go. When the front end loader is in here, it makes it tight. Um, just a suggestion, take your front end loader off, makes life a lot easier, you can get into things easier, you're not dealing with the hydraulics and the, and the main boom. You can get in here a little bit easier to the hydro, or to the uh, oil filter. Really easy to service. Um, <laughs> little blooper on my own part. Don't forget to put the oil plug back into the pan, because you can pour 15 liters of oil into it and it won't make any difference on the dipstick until you put the plug back in. So, costly mistake because it went right into the used oil, so I now have expensive chain oil for my chain because that's what I use my used oil in. So, yeah, try not to do that. Implement wise, um, of course, you got the original bucket on the front, it's held up well. Uh, second to that, I've got the snow pusher here, the homemade. Uh, not hard to make. Actually, I go through it in that uh, video I referred to earlier, the uh, smarter, not harder. Works well, definitely increases what you can push for snow. And then uh, i got a video coming up here shortly on the uh, stump bucket. It is a little long for the Kubota, for the BX, 
Um, it's three feet in length front to back and the curl strength isn't quite there. So I know Goodwork uh, Tractor, they make one and it's considerably shorter than this. So I'm probably going to modify this one to be more like that. Um, but otherwise, you know, work is advertised. You can buy frames, uh, like the quick attach frames from your Kubota dealer. I know Thunder Bay uh, Kubota, Randy, uh, he has them there. So if you're looking to start a project and build something for your tractor, they're definitely the folks to talk to. Um, actually, their product support overall has been excellent. Um, won't be buying anything other than Kubota, and that's uh, large, largely in part to the dealership. So they've taken care of me, and uh, that's the way it should be. So. That's the front end. Now I guess we'll go take a look at what I've got for the back end. Okay, so for three-point hitch attachments, we've got the WC46 wood chipper from Woodland Mills. Um, there's about 25 hours on this. Works great. Um, the only thing I would recommend is that you don't try to feed it wet, wet wood. Um, and there's probably somewhere in the manual that says you're not supposed to do that, and I've done it anyways. Um, it will get built up in between the uh, drive and the uh, chipper. But really works as advertised. The hydraulic feed is excellent. You stuff the tree in it, you walk away, and it just does its thing. Um, actually, I've got a video on this one too. Uh, and it uh, kind of outlines how it was built, how well it works. No complaints. Good job on Woodland Mills Park for that. Uh, next to that, the Land Pride. Uh, Rotary cutter. Number on it is on here somewhere. Um, it's your medium duty uh, rotary mower. The uh, works well. I wouldn't recommend using it in dry, dry uh, environment. Just with the fire hazard, you spark off a rock and then you got a fire going or something. Definitely didn't want to do that last couple weeks around here, so it hasn't moved in you know just about three weeks now. So otherwise, it's been excellent. Um, like the uh, drive shaft holder, trouble free. Definitely not a quiet tool though. And work. That's the wrong snowblower. Right snowblower. So this snowblower came off a of B. I think it was 2100 and it hasn't been on the tractor yet. There was a QGG fine, 500 bucks, figured for 500 bucks they can make it work. So we'll see how it goes. It may replace the box plate in the winter. We'll see how that works out and we'll have a video on that once the snow falls. Hopefully that's not for a day or two yet. And the newest addition to machine, not a three-point hitch attachment, but mid-mount mower. Um, only used it once. Goes on pretty easy. Uh, recommendations if you're not putting it on and off on super paved flat driveways or something like that. The uh, wheels, jack them up as high as they go on the high setting to turn them. Makes it much easier to put it in and out of the uh, tractor. Works well. Makes more the lawn really, really easy. That's a lot better to do it with a 20 inch push mower. Anyways, folks, that's kind of the wrap up for the X, and it's just about 300 hours. Um, like I said, Thunder Bay Kubota, Randy there, he's taking care of us well. I'm not sponsored by them, but definitely recommend them to the highest. Um, my understanding customer support, my own personal experience customer support. thumbs up, share it, like it, and subscribe. It's going to rain some more. We need it. You can hear the thunder in the background. Hopefully the thunder's not lighting off any more fires. We've got enough in the area. So. 
Enjoy your Saturday, folks. Cheers. Be safe.